Content and information. This is Just. a really exciting uh, show today. Right now, we mm -hmm. have Chris with Chris? ACI. ACI Aquaculture. We're going to talk you. some aquaculture and defining yes. it and all kinds of great And we stuff. also have a special guest. Jake Adams is with us. Woo! Come, Come on, on now from hey. Reef Builders. You all know Jake. Surprise, surprise. Didn't, and know, didn't know if I was going to be able to make it, but uh, we arrived. Yes. Wow. You right. arrived. Happy to have and you guys. We have a very spirited discussion today about defining aquaculture and I think it's going to be great. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to this one. We're going to do a um, quick get to know Chris real quick before we yeah. get too heated around here. Yes. Um. Yeah. So a little bit about Chris. How long have you been in the industry and what is how, ACI aquaculture? Yeah, what is ACI aquaculture? Well we've, uh, ACI is uh, 12, a little more, uh, over 12 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we started in May 23rd, 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, we started off thinking about just doing straight aquaculture mm -hmm. and uh, learned real quick that <laughs> what we thought we could do on the small amount of space we had uh -huh. was just not going to happen. Right. So we ended up um, growing the company and going into importing corals, and which has been great for us because it's given us the ability to bring in some amazing pieces of coral that we are able to keep for aquaculture right and over right. the 12 years we have stockpiled some of the nicest corals I've ever seen um, and there's plenty more out there that are even better yes. but you know being an importer we get the chance to cherry pick our own shipments right and right, um, right, right. that's been uh, one of the things that I absolutely love about what we do because I love corals right. um, and just being able to do what I love on mm. a daily basis is um, is a blessing you yeah. know and no, absolutely so we're 12 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we started with a little measly $10,000 loan from Discover mm -hmm. Card uh -huh. um, with 0% financing. <laughs> and it was a Just big like our bread financing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge risk for me at that point in my life because, yeah. you know, my wife was making, Amanda was making more money than me. And yeah, I was yeah. like, what am I going to do? How am yeah, I going yeah, yeah. uh, to be the breadwinner of the family? Uh -huh. And um, that little $10,000, 0% loan turned yeah. into what we are today, which is, you know, a tiny little player in the game, in my uh -huh. opinion, for importing and being a wholesaler. Right. And focus has always been for aquaculture, but uh, we lost a little bit of that um, when we moved into the farm. Uh -huh. We got it back, we lost it, and then Indo went away. Uh -huh. And it was like, what did you do all those years? You should have been doing right. more. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. what we've done now in uh, even the last year and a half has um, really been awesome to watch. Uh, how our farm has grown from just uh, you know, 100, 150 different color uh -huh. morphs and species to well over 350 different color morphs and species wow. that we're farming. Now, we don't have yeah. half of that on the market yet, right, right. Yeah. Um, but you know, these things take time to grow. No, of course. Some things are of course. slow, some things are fast, and you know, I started it because I love sticks, uh -huh. acros, and um, that's probably my favorite part of the farm right. is our right. acropora section. Very and, awesome. Uh, excellent. So, a little bit about us. Okay, excellent. Guys, so we are giving away a $250 gift card to Waterbox Aquariums. You have to share and comment aquaculture. I know a lot of you are already doing it. I see they it's already know what we popping up. They're already on top of it. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy. Um, but. Uh, a lot of people are in here. Definitely share the stream, guys. Um, we also want to tell you about our special financing before we get into our topic today. 36-month yep. um, financing is available today only uh, through waterboxaquariums.com. So it's perfect time to get your aquarium yep, of and your dreams. And we're already offering as a bread financing. So yes. and then split pay. And split pay. So any product, a thousand dollars below, up to fifty dollars um, for equal payments. You just make the first payment today. So uh, really, really great. Um, and we're going to show the, a quick video. You want to? Yep. Let's show a quick video and I'll hop into the discussion. 
Waterbox Aquariums now offers financing and split pay payment options powered by Bread. Checking your rate won't affect your credit score. Get a decision in seconds with no obligation to buy. Finance your order over 6, 12, or 24 months at competitive interest rates as low as 0% APR. For Blue Friday only, we are offering a 36-month financing on all purchases. Or use Split Pay. Split your purchase into four easy interest-free payments. Available on purchases from $50 to $1,000. Your new water box is a click away. Waterbox financing powered by Brett. 36 month term available from November 1st, 2019 at 11 a.m. Eastern to November 2nd, 2019 at 11 a.m. Eastern. The terms are for a loan to finance a purchase. Rates range from 0 to 29.99% APR, resulting in 12 equal monthly payments of 83.33 at 0% APR, or 36 equal monthly payments of 30. <laughs> get yourself some bread. All right. Let's like, get you some financing <laughs> today. Know. Wow. So uh, Chris has brought some. Um, some photos, right, of your facility that yes. we should probably should show yes. um, to get things started um, and let people see kind of a little bit about your operation that you got here in Florida. Awesome. So, um, as you can see here, bam! That's, That's an overview from above. Uh, it, see, it shows you the fish system, shows mm -hmm. you the frag run, the inverts, and then one of the wild systems, and mm -hmm. then here's our uh, wild coral system. This is where we receive all of our corals that we uh, import. Yeah. Um, we didn't get you a photo. Actually, right below at the very bottom, you can see our newest farm tank. It's a 12 okay. foot by six foot tank, which is um, set up so that, you know, our main farm in the back is 2,200 gallons. It's not mm -hmm. that big, mm -hmm. but we have so much coral packed into that thing yeah. that, you know, most people would, couldn't, when they saw it, they, they see it, they're just like, how do you have this much coral packed into, a, right. into this mm -hmm. small area? And what we're doing now with the new system is we're fragging corals from mm -hmm. the back and we're putting all of it out front, which is then being healed, mm -hmm. and then we're putting it on the market. Uh, so we're using the main system that we have for farming to actually get them to the point of fragmentation so that we can actually then plug them so that people can, we can encrust them so that customers are our retail customers right. can can uh, purchase them from us, okay. and then the end user then can purchase it from the retail Absolutely. store. Absolutely, right. So that's something that is very important. We should let you know that you only sell to wholesale dealers only. Correct. Right. So you do not sell to the end user, um, the hobbyist, but uh, they can go to their local fish store. Correct. And get your products. Of course, of course. Right. You know, and, and we encourage anybody if yeah. you if you see what you like, you know, especially on Facebook, and you see mm -hmm. something something that you uh, like that we post. Talk to your local fish store, you know, have them get in contact with us and, um, you know, we can gladly send the corals yes. to that store to so that you store. can purchase the corals. Perfect. Um, we are trying to, you know, the, the aquarium, the reef aquarium hobby has mm -hmm. um, changed so much in the last 12 years. Oh, yeah, and, a lot. Um, a good, a lot of good. Yeah. You know, there's, there's I think, a lot more awareness mm -hmm. and that's what we want to do. We want to bring even more awareness to um, what we do right. and actually share some information as to what we consider being coral aquaculture or coral farming. Sure, and sure. There's no real definition right, of it. Right, right, right. There's well, nothing, you know, and that's, right. that's the topic, topic of the conversation, conversation here, right? So, uh, what is coral aquaculture? Um, what do you think it is? What is, I mean, there's a lot of interpretation here. There is, yeah. you're exactly you know right. I mean, this is. This is a showcase of some of the beautiful stuff. That this is some of this, this is from your farm, right? This, these yes. photos? One of my favorites in this entire, yeah. in this photo here is mm -hmm. the top left picture, which is the ACI Devil's Eye Monty. There you go. If anybody would ever say that we did an aquaculture that coral, that it's this coral or that coral, it's right. already got a name on it, mm -hmm. I will beg to differ because it was a hitchhiker on a Vietnam zoo and it was about the size of my pinky nail when we got it. Wow. It took us two years mm -hmm. to get 300 three quarter inch frag plugs available to sell. And being on a commercial level, yeah. you know, we've got an email that goes out to up to as many as 600 customers. Wow. And 300 is a minuscule amount yeah, yeah. if everybody people. exactly yeah, yeah. so if everybody work. wanted to know <laughs> we'd be out and out like that yeah. so the fact that we grew it from a pinky nail size yeah. piece of coral that we saw that had what had potential and turned it into what we have today you know that's a hundred percent aquaculture i mean you cannot right. deny that right yeah. uh now the other some of the other stuff that we have is um in these photos are we purchased named corals from a store or mm -hmm. You know, I bought some of this stuff online, paid yep. retail for it, and right. you know, said I have to have that for the farm. And right. you buy two or three pieces of it, and you, again, on a one-inch plug or a three-quarter-inch plug, and you uh -huh. farm it out. And it takes time. Yeah, to, so I see. To how long does that it. take? Like, you know, to get 
it off of one plug onto another, you know, how? It all depends on what species it is. Yeah. I mean, Montes, mm -hmm. they grow so fast sometimes in, right. in some cases. Now, yeah. when you talk about um, Saboensis or Paloensis, mm -hmm. they're one of the slower growers that we have. And mm -hmm. I've got some that we've had for two years wow. that are still not even close to being marketing. Wow. But we'll have it eventually. Right. And, yeah. you know, the way we're doing mm -hmm. it, we hope to be able to continue to have it on a on, you know, released regularly right. Right. in the beginning when we launch it, you yeah, know, yeah. because of the way we want to, you know, we want to allow the mom and pop shops that don't have the mentality of the, the coral geeks right. that have right, the right, shops, right. you know, yeah. they want the best, only the best. These yeah. other shops, the mom and pops, they want the best, but they really don't have the buying power for uh -huh. say sometimes right, or right. the, you know, the ability necessary to even get, acquire that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. we want to bring that to everybody. Yeah. This is wow, our what is this? The Forest Fire Digi. Yeah. I got that from Vincent Chalice mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. It was five maricultures. Oh, no, that's the that's the Forest Fire. That's Forest Fire. Green forest base. Fire. Um, it had uh, we got five little mariculture colonies of it because I told him I'm like you got to yeah. give me some Forest Fire. He yeah. got them for me, and we took those five when literally we got the our last Indo shipment came in mm -hmm. on May second. It shut down on May fourth, yeah. and we took those five mariculture colonies and busted them up into little itty bitty like quarter inch nubs right. and stuck them on frag plugs and we grew them out and we had them available on the market in January of this year. Wow. So within, was it nine months, we uh, had that coral farmed out enough that they looked like this and we had them marketable for our retail customers to be yep. able to purchase from us. That's great. Wow. And now we've got them growing on our walls. I mean, we've got so much yeah. of it growing wow, we're trying this. to figure out. That's, that is. I bought it as a watermelon samacor, five frags. Yeah. I was told we could never That's mark crazy, it. That's crazy, man. You know what? The guy that I got it from yeah. said that you won't have this available for five years. It grows oh. so slow. I brought him back after after about four months, and I had from five frags, we had like 70 That's frags crazy. of it. Wow. He's like, yeah. holy cow, what are you doing different than I'm doing? It's just, you know, husband methods are different yeah. from everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, we find out what works for us and we continue to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. That's awesome. and it's hard to do in one system having SPS, LPS, softies, all that stuff. And yeah, there's issues here and there, yeah. but our goal is to eventually have a setup where we can keep the different types of corals separate, right, you know, from right. SPS, LPS to soft corals. So that way there is no chemical warfare with soft corals mm -hmm. with, and, and, and hard corals per se. Yeah. Um, or you got your LPSs that are stinking your SPSs that are, you know, right. an inch away right. because their sweepers are coming out. Yeah, so I'm looking at some good it's a challenge. stuff, endo. Yeah. Endo, so yeah. let's get into this whole topic of defining aquaculture, right? I mean, like, I mean, Jake's over Jake's there Jake's got, the time he's, in. he's ready, man. <laughs> he's ready. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, let's talk about it. Let's, well, know, where, where do we start? Let's hear from Jake too. Yeah. What are you guys going to say? The discussion really needs to start with things that people have been culturing for thousands of years, you know. Mm -hmm. um, typically we use the F uh, designation for F1, F2, F0 for its wild, mm -hmm. um, but that's really in the case of breeding. Sexual right? spawning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when people, f people were, were breeding saltwater fish <coughs> before they were fragging and propagating corals, mm -hmm. and you really have to kind of start there because mm -hmm. there's tank raised right. fish, mm -hmm. there's tank reared fish, <laughs> captive bred, captive raised, captive. <laughs> yeah. And then you have um, tomboys <coughs> like Tom Bowling mm -hmm. who might collect eggs from the wild. Mm -hmm. And then he brings Bring those into captivity, it, yeah. right. and then he'll raise those up. And so, just the point is, there's there's a, a gradient, a spectrum from something that's completely wild collected mm -hmm. to something that is hasn't been in the ocean for ten years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just just tricky for corals because it's asexual. Can't generationalize. There's one person who's breeding corals right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jamie Craig's exactly. in the UK, and so mm -hmm. it's like. You know, how do we start defining, you know, what is something that is truly uh, acclimated to aquariums, right? Yeah. Aquarium conditioned, aquarium grown, because you can also farm them in the ocean. Sure, That Correct. doesn't really make them Correct. condition and propagate an aquarium environment. Exactly. Like, all right, certain corals, like the ones that you shared, mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. bubblegum monster, or sorry, not, it was the- uh, uh, There was bubblegum monster right there. The bubblegum mm -hmm. uh, monster. This is the- uh, You had the forest fire, mm -hmm. the sunset monty. Mm -hmm. um, we have the, which we call the Hurricane Lepastria, and then you got the uh, f um, Firestorm Maze Brain. You know, that stuff, all of that stuff right there, we acquired a fragment of, and 
it's so awesome to watch it grow into. Mm -hmm. So that's what I consider aquaculture. And a lot of people consider aquaculture, and Jake will contest to this, that if you frag the coral and you grow it onto a plug, that's aquaculture. In a sense, it is, but so it's, it's not yeah, far it's like, yeah. out of the wild to be considered farming. I mean, you consider, you know, if a guy's at home just fragging corals, gluing, grow, you know, gluing them to some plugs, it, is, he, is he doing well, aquaculture? That's the problem that yeah. there's no real definition mm -hmm. and every species or every type of coral is mm -hmm. different. You know, when you talk right. about an Acropora, I mean, you buy a fragment of Acropora from somebody mm -hmm. and it's, you know, an inch, half inch, right. and you grow it out. That's aquaculture. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Now, it takes two I years to get it that big versus another coral that could take one month to or get Or does it take two big. years under mm -hmm. the right conditions? I would, I would well. say it's mm -hmm. all aquaculture. Okay. We need to come up with some new designations. And I think there's like there's three criteria we're looking mm -hmm. for in corals that have been in, in our aquariums for a long time. We want to know that it was any kind of reduced impact from purely wild collection. This goes back, and this is kind of uh, mm -hmm. um, kind of an opinion that has shifted over the years, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I've been doing this for a really long time. I remember mm -hmm. when no one ever sold frags. We just gave them or traded them away right. because mm -hmm. it was such a small group. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, that or, uh, yeah, pre-2000, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, pre-2000. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But so, so yeah. we used to really, really look down and steer upon the chop shopping, mm -hmm. right? We know a lot of these corals early on would come in and they would be you know, really beautiful. And this is, we're talking way before the internet, before yeah. like online mm -hmm. sales. And people would just cut them up and sell them off and you know, we'd turn our nose up at them. And you know, that's in the very loosest sense of the word, is it mm -hmm. aquaculture? But it is propagation. And the thing yeah. is mm -hmm. like, at the end of the day, you are reducing the wild impact. Agreed. You know, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. fair mm -hmm. to call what you're doing aquaculture and what a chop shopper or a frag and packers, mm -hmm. it's not fair to call them the same thing. Exactly. But, but they are. You're no, reducing yeah. the impact of just taking a single mm -hmm. wild coral. I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. But, in, you know, the, I think the biggest problem nowadays is when you have somebody saying they're aquaculturing a coral and really, you, you know, Jake, you can contest to this. You know when you see a chop shop coral or when you see an aquaculture yes, coral. Yeah. And, you know, when somebody is sending a photo out and they're saying that it is an aquacultured coral, just because it was a wild colony that they cut up mm -hmm. and healed it, it grew down onto the plug. And we're, I'm, I'm talking more along the lines of like Favites, Favia, mm -hmm. you know, um, Ganastria, you know, some of the harder, slower growing yeah. corals, mm -hmm. you know, don't call it aquacultured if I can see that, wait a minute, that right there is the original frag you got from that wild colony. Anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go around to, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to just go straight back to ACI, but what mm -hmm. we've done with all of those corals is, yes, we've done exactly the same thing. We chopped them, mm -hmm. we've thrown them onto the plug, and then guess what? We've taken that one inch frag plug and then we've cut it into four, cut it into six, and then we put it on another plug. Mm -hmm. So then, do it again. Right. If we start off with four originals, we went to 16. Mm -hmm. Then we went to, you know, the whole way down the line. How do you ever find the original fragment that started it all? And at what point you do can't. you find it to be yeah. long-term aquaculture? Exactly. Is it beneficial so, yeah. to the wild? Like I consider aquaculture if it is benefiting the wild longer term. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, we took one coral out and we sold it and cut it into 20. Does that benefit the wild? Yes. Of course but it does. does. I consider it when it's come a couple. But what is it? Frags generations. Down. Not generations. I can't say generations. But there's like like a few yeah. frag sequences down, let's say. Right. Frag, grow out, frag, grow out. And then you've now hit a point, I think, that it has benefited the wild population impactfully. Exactly. Right. And it's also shown to be a proven coral because it is from grown the first small, original four yeah. frags. And, and mm -hmm. you know, it's not F1 like sexual spawning. Mm -hmm. So what is it really? So from our originals that, you know, Mm -hmm. One-inch frags that we originally fragged is that the FZ, FG zero, so it's like frag generation zero, and then you have frag generation one. I don't know. It's something that I we've think defined. This conversation is going to lead into perhaps a, a, a larger discussion because mm -hmm. we need to identify what really matters. You know, um, I think the, thing, the, the three things. Mm -hmm. I think we're looking for three things when we're talking about what we call loosely an aquarium coral. 
right? Something that's mm -hmm. been propagated and reduced impact on the wild. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, something that is uh, conditioned to aquarium life. Mm -hmm. like yeah. We know yeah, agree, how yeah. that's going to grow. Mm -hmm. We know that it's going to grow well. You know, green slimer, sunset sure. monty okay. is been around forever because it grows really well. But it always looks like that. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. You know, and then you know, three kind of the same as the conditioning, but like that coral. Uh, a few of us reefers will tell you what it's going to look like under high flow, high light, what it's going to look like under LEDs, what it's going to look like under metal halides. It's been around long enough to be able to yeah. know exactly. all the changes exactly. that it can make. So, yeah. so, so it's three criteria, but mm -hmm. if you just use those three criteria, you know, the coral farmers in Solomon Islands, mm -hmm. they don't take a coral and just chop it up. They take the same coral and chop it up the same way you right. would if they have mm -hmm. a um, uh, blue tortuosa. Lots of our blue tortuosa came from Solomon Islands initially. Those guys, they know what that coral is going to do mm -hmm. over a long timeline. They are reducing their impact on the ocean, but mm -hmm. it has zero aquarium conditioning. Right. So yeah. let me ask you, would you rather have a coral that was farmed in the ocean that looks a certain way, or a coral that was tank conditioned? Like if you even took a, just a wild coral, completely uncut, put it mm -hmm. in a tank for well, months or two years, and you know what it's going to do. Which one is the more desirable coral? Personally for me, it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, it's like when we started, when, when I wanted mm -hmm. Monty's, mm -hmm. For the farm, you know, I had a, a, a friend of mine that had a 90 gallon aquarium. He got tank yeah. of the month on Reef Central one time, and he had um, Superman and Poker Star and all these different Montes. And I bought them from him because mm -hmm. he bought them from Steve Tyree or whoever right, had the right. original fragments available. So for me personally, I would want something that has been proven to be so far out of the wild that it is holding its color and it's going to be absolutely, you it's know. It's conditioned for aquariums. Exactly. Yeah. Just like you know, he yeah. was just we were just showing a picture of yeah. our acros right here. This is um, a year and four months. All these photos up here about a year and four months, so a little bit less um, from when Indonesia shut down. We took uh, from Vincent's shipment a fragment from every single acropore that we didn't already have on our farm, mm -hmm. and put one fragment this big in the middle of a three and a half inch, four inch tile. Right. And in a year and four or five months, we're now offering those corals on the market to uh -huh. our customers as aquaculture or farmed corals because they've grown in the colonies. Hmm. You know, that is, acropores are one of the easiest ones to define as being whether right. how, how easy they are to farm. It's, I think we need to define more so not necessarily acropores and montipores um, as we do some of the other slower yeah. growing species. Yeah. And it's like Jake said, you know, what do you want? Do you want a proven coral that was mm -hmm. farmed in the ocean mm -hmm. or do you want a coral that has been proven for many years or you know, in captivity right. to sustain its color and its health and be more susceptible to minor changes in this and, and that where a wild yeah. or a maricultured version might not be as susceptible to an alkalinity swing, per yeah. se. You know, it, it happens. I mean, mm -hmm. we farm corals and we have problems once in a while. It's right, like, oh right. my gosh, what do we do wrong? No, There's no, stuff no, like yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. We need, for everything in the aquarium hobby, everything in the aquarium mm -hmm. industry, there's a lot of businesses and industries that have come before us, and mm -hmm. we need to look to them for examples, whether it's a reptile trade when it comes to birds, uh, or birds when it comes mm -hmm. to regulation, or the you know, captive breeding of saltwater fish. They don't have it nailed down either. I know. You know tank raised, tank mm -hmm. reared, captive yeah. bred, captive reared. Um, so I think uh, live aquaria, they kind of. Start, live aquaria grows a lot of frags, mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody really recognized how many frags they grow on their own. But when they first really kind of made a big push, you know, maybe about mm -hmm. 10 years ago, they had the certified captive grown coral, CCGC, and they had their little seal in it. It didn't really mean anything, but like we could do something like that for the industry, and we say, okay, this coral's been in captivity for at least a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it uh, you know holds its color and its condition, but like something, and it's gonna take a long time for us to go organize mm -hmm. and to, more. to come up with a term yeah. that will satisfy several of these characteristics that we're looking for mm -hmm. in a certified captive grown coral. You know, yep, um, that's true. That's true. But maybe do we have a like certificate a with everything that we know is formed and grown? I mean, is that is something that that's going to help to define what we're mm -hmm. doing and actually keep the value in the coral listen, because listen, it is what it is? If Vincent was here, he would say that if we don't organize and if we exactly. keep treating this whole industry like the wild, wild west, mm -hmm. that just that's just not good for us, not good for the image, not good Agreed. for um, communicating our message to mm -hmm. governments who are shutting down corals right. all over the world. So the That's main true. goal of yeah. everyone is yeah. to keep the trade open exactly. from the ocean, but also protect it and find the ways of how we're going to continue to grow corals, aquaculture, 
keep the environment safe, but not have all of our avenues shut down because they're not being handled properly. Well, it's know, really what the main, I think, comes yeah. down to. Like, like, what way more. to do you it? Know, we have a lot of people who are trying to shut us down because mm -hmm. they are constantly attacking us and we're completely always on the defense. But the answer is not captive growing everything, no. right? Because you, the people who have the most to lose are the ones who live on coral reefs. Exactly. You take that away from them, That's what are they supposed to do now? They're mm. supposed to fish big fish, destroy mm -hmm. their ecosystems, mm. allow you know foreign companies and organizations mm. to log you know upstream, which is going to destroy the mountain and destroy mm -hmm. the reef. Like getting a little bit off the rails now, but like this is part of a larger discussion about organizing and. Yeah. Um, you know, just having a little bit more transparency. Yeah. But we can't yeah. keep reacting to these accusations. We can't keep at it, reacting to this criticism. Like we need to be on. This is where Waterbox. I'm, you know, I'm impressed what you guys have done mm -hmm. because you didn't just do it. You just you kept doing it. It's right. a lot. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's a certain amount of t of work to set up a studio and say, okay, we're going to stream once a week. Is that what you guys? Yeah. Do? Well, twice? once or twice a week. Yeah. Twice, twice a week. Yeah. It's another thing to do it. <laughs> week in, week out. Week in, yeah, week trust out, me, week in, week we're, we're fully aware. You know? yeah. you've, been, you've been around for 12 yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, Rebuilders is about 12, 13 yeah. years old. Like the consistency day in, day out. So really appreciate Waterbox yeah. you know, having us here yeah. and, 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 and came, yeah. creating this platform uh, to have these conversations. Some of them well, aren't. Yeah, I don't think it's a conversation we, that ever has an ending point, is kind of the yeah. thing. Like, this is like such an evolving thing that everyone gets. We could go on for hours you, about this. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, he, he mentioned government. You know, I mean, oh, God, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you break it all down, God, yeah. you know, our whole goal is to be able to export these corals around the world mm -hmm. and to apply for our own CITES paperwork. If there's no data to back up what we're doing, yeah. you know, we can't get it. And we've been going through it now for four months and mm -hmm. we've got data from day one on every single species of coral that we're farming uh -huh. yeah. and we can tell you exactly when we started with it how big it was and how many we've created from it and how That's many awesome. we've sold from it we have a yeah. monty that we've sold 37,000 frags of oh, since yeah. 2013 wow. or 2014 that's crazy. Wow. That's and crazy. that's all 100 percent farmed at, the, at aci but that information yeah you know i think you know we're on the defensive everybody's on the defensive all the time and that kind of information that we have we can be on the offensive about it mm -hmm. and yeah. we you know if, if we as really an industry don't do, do that it's really hard to promote our aquaculturing efforts when we don't really know what aquaculture is i know that's <laughs> agreed agreed it's, it's really a good point we'll to back to, right, back to yeah. the data like we yeah. have to yeah. back up yeah. what we're saying yeah so i mean works. andrew here says this is a great discussion he, he's commenting um How you doing, nancy andrew? says coral puppy mills um <laughs> she also says yes jake she completely agrees with you uh glenn says jake is the man um <laughs> just got a lot of love on youtube uh, yeah you know it's a lot of comments in here. Someone says we need to create a universal documented system. Uh, somebody L said. Listen, with best laid plans, it mm. takes two detractors. One detractor who's loud enough to throw it all off the rails. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't, I don't know where we go from here, but yeah. there's, you know, on one end of the spectrum, you have somebody like Chris, mm -hmm. who knows he sold 30,000 plus uh, rainbow Monty frags mm -hmm. because he has documentation. He right. has to, you know, mm -hmm. your uh, licensed aquaculture floor, uh, facility in Florida. I right. that to my wife all, too. But yeah. Not, <laughs> yeah. yeah, shout yeah. out to Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we know who, who yeah. does the real paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> I farm, she paper does the paperwork. But not every, <laughs> not every state has uh, aquaculture requirements. They don't have uh, right. licensing. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. the other thing we got to talk about is aquaculture certification. Is it is it fair to somebody like me that actually farms corals on the level that we do on a commercial level? Yeah. to have an aquaculture certificate saying that we're an aquaculture farm. Right. Is it okay for that hobbyist that has a 100-gallon tank in his house and a 40-gallon mm -hmm. breeder on the side to be also certified for, as aquaculture? They're yeah. not on the same level. No, yeah. it's not no, the same. Yeah, that's that's the whole. problem with the state of Florida. Yeah. We can yeah. go on and on about that, but that's a problem I think we need to address with so the state. Know, this, yeah. this sounds like a, a real like regulatory, um, maybe cutting hair, splitting hair conversation, mm -hmm. but it also kind of leads back into um, people buying coral pictures online. <laughs> like you've seen them, mm -hmm. you've seen these, what we call juiced pictures. Uh. Either, either the lighting is, is flattering or the camera settings are flattering Photoshop. or there's an orange filter or it's flattering <laughs> settings. <laughs> after you take a picture. Or you yeah. take all those things yeah. to create. Like I look at my Facebook feed and you know, yeah. I follow all kinds <laughs> of companies, yeah. right? Yep. And I look at certain ones, I'm like, oh my God. 
my corals never look like that. <laughs> I, go, I go over my tank with my yeah, own glasses. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, they all look like that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. Them. And then, you know, it's funny when, when, you know, as a wholesaler, when I have a retail customer that owns a shop yeah. and I get a photo from him, hey, can you get me this? I'm like, nope. Really. I, I can't get it for you unless you put you your orange glasses on because <laughs> they don't look like that in real life. And yeah. if you really think it's that nice in person, mm -hmm. Put it under some metal halide, like yeah, we grow our corals change, underneath yeah. of, and let you see what it really looks like. Then put it under the LEDs, right. and then oh wait, it still doesn't look like that. Oh wait, let's put the orange glass. On. Oh finally, <laughs> are you gonna look at your tank <laughs> right, right, with right. your orange glasses on orange every time glasses. you look at your It sounds like a, a great. like an inconsequential issue, but it, it really is a big deal. It is. Someone like Chris mm -hmm. spends tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. just running a facility. I mean. Your electricity bill on this guy, cost, ballpark yeah. is forty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. That's just electricity, oh. right? Yeah. And you're trying to be honest. <laughs> you're trying to be yeah. honest, yeah. And, and others like you who retail, because in right. your wholesale, right, right. they're trying to be honest. Live Accord is a great example. Unique corals. They don't juice their pictures. They try to make them as flattering as possible under white light, so that the yes. coral picture that you see really reflects what you get. Mm -hmm. yes. Meanwhile, you have some unscrupulous dealers, some fly-by-nighters, like, I've been mm -hmm. doing this long enough, those guys yeah. come and go. Oh, they do. Of course. Like, I mean, like, it, you it, can point it's, them out, it's, like, all right, that guy's gonna be around for like two years, and he's gonna have a tank crash. I love right. never right. Right. Let me finish. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but the, the issue is, you have these, these newbie reefers yeah. who see these pictures online, mm -hmm. and they think, why don't my corals look like that? Because they're not supposed to look like yeah, that. No, we never reality. look like that. Right, right, right. Nope. That's not reality. It, 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 yeah. You're exactly right. You know, they, it, we all spend a lot. Of, yeah. oh, no, I'm, I'm you're fine. We <laughs> spend a lot of time online. Yeah. We spend a lot of time on Instagram, seeing mm -hmm. beautiful photographs, and on Facebook, and these curated images, just like women, just like mm -hmm. fashion and cars. Everything is just sexified and glamorified. Right. But it really gives a, a false sense uh, of reality. Yeah, a false just idea of what the, the coral should be. Yeah. Jake, it, 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 you hit the nail on the head because this, this is one of my biggest pet peeves is is the people that want the photo. And I'm or like, you name. know, or the name, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, we're farming so many corals right now, I can't even keep track of the names that we came up with the corals right. when we lost it three months ago. Yeah. And it, it's so frustrating for me, you know, and then the fact that when people get our corals because of the fact that we and I talked about this yeah. earlier. We take our photos under not LEDs. Right. It's under more white light, yeah. so that way when people like what they see in the photo, they're, they're really gonna they're like it. Really gonna like it when I get the to The best thing <laughs> in the world is when I get that phone yeah. call going, "Dude, that coral is way better than the photo. Yeah. Why didn't yeah. you make it?" I'm like, "Because you're happy right now, right. and guess what? Now you're really hyped up. Mm -hmm. When you buy a coral off of our photos, yeah. it will look better in person, and not guaranteed, the and yeah. not the reverse." Yes. And listen, this I have visited fantastic. the facilities yeah. of a lot of these folks who. Uh, use, uh, let's just say, flattering lighting and, and, <laughs> and settings for a lot of things. And uh, yeah, just in real life there, they have to tell you what those corals are for you to even recognize them at all. Yep. Wow. wow. You're exactly right. Guys, this is, uh, listen, this I gotta go bring in. a really long time. <laughs> Jake, uh, both of these guys are gonna be at the family reunion coming up. Listen, if this discussion is any bit interesting to you, you know, we are gonna go deep into this. It's getting get real deep Keys. down there for really? sure. Trust me, the family reunion is coming up. We do have to have pick a winner we do. Uh, of the yes. $250 gift card from okay. Waterbox Aquariums. Okay. Drum roll, please. And the winner is, oh, actually you gotta watch the video first. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I was so, so close. close. I was oh so close. <laughs> oh my god. It's like Ryan Seacrest. Right, roll it. Go ahead and roll that. Uh. You're invited to the Waterbox Family Reunion, February 1st and 2nd at the Hawks Cay Resort in the Florida Keys. Gather with fellow hobbyists as you learn from industry professionals, attend workshops, listen to speakers, or play outdoors with the many available activities. Snorkel in the saltwater lagoon, swim with the dolphins, pet a manta ray, or just enjoy the tranquility of the Florida Keys. Come join the family of aquarium enthusiasts for this epic retreat. Room reservations are limited. For more information, please visit waterboxaquariums.com forward slash the family reunion. The All right. Okay. And okay. we're back. So let's. Are we gonna do this for real? <laughs> we're right, gonna do this for real. Let's, let's do okay. This the drum roll is. All right. The winner is Christopher Rogers. Woo! Christopher Rogers. Woo! Christopher Rogers. Congratulations, Christopher Rogers. Wow. Hold on. Uh oh. No signal. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> All right. Christopher, Christopher Rogers. Rogers. Woo! 
Christopher Rogers. Congratulations. $250 is gift card to the winner of a $250 gift card. Um, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We're at the top of the hour. Um, I believe ORA. ORA is coming uh, up next. We're going to talk awesome. about Clownfish Babies. Talk about Clownfish Babies. Sounds Jake, good. thank Are you guys done? so much. I know well, we could I talk for a minute. I got more to say, too. Come on. Now. We have like five hours to go talk, <laughs> I guess. Can I wrap it up with some statements? Some are statements? They, are they good? Uh, yeah. Still going? Hold on, we get the camera back up. All right. We got you, 30 seconds. You, go, 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 go. I just want to let everybody know, don't buy coral pictures. Don't buy corals for the pictures. Don't buy them for the name or who they came from. Just buy what you like. Exactly. And, and obviously what you can afford. Exactly. I'm always big into what I call the across the room factor. If across the room, a coral catches my attention, no matter what it is, a soft coral, a zoanthid, you're going to enjoy it so much more than if you're trying to like you know get up on a tiny little nano. That and is our awesome. goal is That's to great. bring affordable back to the hobby with our farmed corals. Bottom line. Dude, listen, out. that's All how right. we do it, man. Waterbox Blue Friday continues, everybody. At the top of the hour, ORA. Stay tuned. Grab a quick bite to eat. We'll see you soon.